now we're ready to start putting the mosaic together. You can see I've got a tray of mixed greens and that's for my background. I have leaves and stalks. My snowdrops are there, my daffodils, poppies, along with the uh, nuggets which you can use for seed heads. I have my nasturtiums here with these nuggets which I can use for the seed heads there. If you have a bumblebee or any ladybirds, any bugs, use those. I'm going to add some millefiori scattered in there along with some of these which give the hint of other buds in the background. Then I've got my salvia, foxglove and last of all my sunflower. Once we've reached the top where the sunflower is placed, we will be exchanging the mixed greens for blues for the sky. But again, this is your mosaic. You can choose any colours you like to do this. This is just a guideline of what I would do. We're going to start with the nasturtiums. And you really only want to be gluing a small area at a time because the silicon is only usable for about 10 or 15 minutes, but it is temperature dependent. So put a little bit of silicon on. And then using the brush, spread it out to round about a millimetre thick. Get right into the corners because this also acts as a key for the grout to stick onto. Excess glue can just be popped up the top there. And if it remains pliable, you can use it. If not, just scrape it off and throw it away. There we go. Take your first nasturtium and start laying it down onto the mirror. And again, choose the sides you like best out of the colours. Just going to... I'm just going to shape this one a little bit more. And really press the pieces down. I'm going to shape this one a little bit more as well because it's quite broad. Okay. And then this one I'm going to narrow down again so that it fits into this gap and looks more as if the petals are overlapping. And if you hold it over the top, you can see roughly where you've got to go. In fact, that should do it. Okay. Right. Now you've got some coloured nuggets and these green nuggets, which you can add in to look like seed heads or small flower buds. So I'm going to pop some of these in here. And then I'm going to carry on, perhaps put a leaf, small leaf in. Let's go for a medium leaf, say that one. You, remember, you may recall what I said about not cutting the veins into the leaves before you actually want to use them. But you can do that now. So if you knit that in half, then cut it into three pieces. And try to keep the pieces together. So that one will go there. Do the same. So that can now go in. And the black grout will act as the veins on this leaf. It's probably going to uh, pop it there so we don't have to cut too much off it. And again, press it right down to get all the air bubbles out. Now this one's going to need a little bit of trimming at the side. You can use your pen just to mark that and then with the nippers just take that little bit out.
Now this last piece is going to be too big because of course you've given a gap in between each piece which has made the whole leaf bigger. So just pop there and again use your pen to take that off and you may need to trim the sides slightly as well. So put that, oops, put that there and it's going to need a little bit off the side as well to make it fit in with the others. And then put that one in as well. Okay, so you've got your first nasturtium and leaf in and you've got some buds. Let's put a bit more flower work in there. So we can have a nasturtium that looks like it's coming in this corner or as if it's behind these here. So if we put a few petals in and we'll see where we go from there. That might fit better, that scoop against that seed head there. So put that one in. And this is where you're going to have to start trimming pieces off. That one there, it's a little bit there and there. Let's just take that off. This one, put it on the side, you can see roughly where the border is. So just hold it in place. And trim along that line. Now for this cut you can use a glass cutter or you can use your nippers, whichever you're most comfortable with. If you're going to use a glass cutter you're going to need to hold that down very carefully because it's only a small cut. So just run it along there and then use your running pliers to break it. So. And hopefully that will fit in nicely. Okay, and we have another one here in the corner. So I don't want to waste that whole petal, so I'm going to use this small piece which I've cut from this one and reshape it to fit that corner. So I'm going to take that off and again using the blades to give me that initial point as we did when we first cut these. Put that there and then mark on the sides what you need to take off, which is about that much. So with the nippers I'm going to take that out and that one. And again keep all these little bits that you're chipping off because I'm going to use those again in a second in the centres of these. And then one more little bit of the yellow to go in there and again I'm using the cut off from this one rather than wasting a whole petal. So again, just trim that. You get the right shape. And you just need a little take a bit off there. And you just need Okay. There we go. Now, before this glue dries, we want to start adding in some green. You can put nuggets in. Also, you can add some of these small um, millefiores. And these give the impression of things like forget-me-nots. Now, because they always are con convex or concave, you want to dip them into a bit of extra glue, just so they've got a little bit on the end there. And find a nice little hole to put them onto like that. This is a slightly bigger one. And that one can go, say, down there. You can put a ladybird in if you wish, or you can leave those for later on. Perhaps use it in the sunflower. Do make sure you press these down very firmly. And put as many in as you want. Don't overload it, um, but just give the hint of other little flowers scattered about in the background. And again, you can add some of these coloured nuggets, which look like buds when all is finished. Okay, now we're going to fill in this green around here. So you're going to have to probably cut some of this up quite small, but because I keep such a large box, all the bits, of green I have left over from other projects go into this box 
So there was plenty to use at all times. The reason I'm turning this one is it has a pen mark on it and I want the pen mark upwards. I don't want it pen side down into the blue, otherwise it will remain there. And use as many different shapes and colours as you have because it gives the impression of a mixed background of leaves, other plants behind. In. Really press it down. Okay, I've got another gap here I want to fill. Okay, okay and just take the end off that. And because this glue might be drying a little bit, I'm just going to dip this into the glue as well. Now returning to this flower, I want to fill in these gaps here to give the impression of stamens in there. So I'm going to use these little tiny pieces of mixed glass that I've trimmed off when cutting the petals. I'm going to pop those in there. And this is one of the reasons I always keep these. Remember, you still need a gap between them. So if your piece is a bit too big, don't force it in. Trim it down to fit. Okay. This one could do with a little bit of orange in here. I have a little square that I want to fit in here, so let's find one of those. Even a little triangle, a bit too small. Again, while you've got to make sure there are gaps in between everything, if the gaps are too heavy, the grout then becomes overbearing in your work. But also the grout can be used in all these gaps here as deeper background, which would be very dark. Now, check that glue. It's too dry. So you can take the pointed end of the stick and if you do this with it and it starts to catch on the end of the stick, then it's much too dry to use. You can't stick new glue on top of dry old glue. It, the Underneath the silicon dries rubbery and it would push the new glue back up again. You seesaw it. This is where the blades come in handy. So. Go in, use the blade, hold the pieces down, just make sure you don't knock them too much, and use the blade to scrape out the dry glue. No, I don't think I like that piece of glass. It's not sitting flat. I may take that out later. For the moment, I'm just going to keep an eye on it. Oops. Knocked that one there, so I'll probably have to re glue that one. Take this glue from here and discard it. Okay, and just make sure there's no, no dry, lumpy silicon. Okay, I'm going to take this on. I don't want it, it's not sitting flat. 
if it doesn't sit flat, you can get an air bubble underneath and grout will sneak under there at the end, ruining the look of your work. Okay, this glue's been not been put down so long and that is actually quite wet still. So let's spread that out here and we'll put another nasturtium in. We'll bring the nasturtiums up this way a little bit. Okay, this is a spectrum water glass and I've stuck it in upside down so I'm going to clean it and put it the other way so that the textured side is on the upper surface and the flat side is down in the glue. However, having taken the glue off there I need to add a little bit more. I'll put some up there if it's too much and again just spread out enough. Some of that's a little bit dry, so I'm going to put it higher up and I'll get rid of it in a minute. Okay, so watch this glass when I put it down, make sure I get it the right way up this time. There we go. Let's go with this one. There's a bit of dry glue there, I'm just going to scrape it off with the blade. There we go. And then the last one in there. And again, if you want, you can fill these little gaps with some colour. Right, now you're ready to either put another nasturtium in or another leaf, entirely up to you. Right, we need to scrape off this dry glue and then we're going to finish this area here. I do apologise for my reflection showing in the mirror, but unfortunately that's the downfall of working with these materials. So I'm going to throw this dry glue away, take it all off. Don't worry about these smears, as long as it's flat, that bit's got a bit of glue in it, but as long as the smears are flat, they will disappear under the rest of the mosaic. It's only when the glue is chunky or lumpy, it'll dry rubbery and bounce your pieces back off. So just take out as much as you can get easily. 
And again, you can use your paintbrush that's been sharpened on one end. Dental picks are good for doing this as well, just pulling out excess glue. Okay, there we go. Now I just want to finish here with one more nasturtium. So a bit more glue in and then spread that out. Again, getting it right back into the corners. Change the brush size as well. Um, usually if I've got to get right down in here, I'll use a small one. And if I've got a big area like this, I'd use a bigger brush. So just change it when you need to. Okay, there we go. I'm going to put this nice orange one in next. I love this colour. It's cross between orange and ambery yellow. It's absolutely beautiful. And again, we've got to trim these to fit. So, using your pen, just mark up the side of the glass there. And again, because that's quite a long cut, I shall use a glass cutter to do that. Hold it right down and then run the glass cutter down the line. And then use the running pliers to break it. You can move them around a little bit while your, while your glue is wet, but try not to snow plough the glue too much. Now that one has got an air bubble under there, so I'm going to lift it and put more glue under it. That's so I can get it off. There we go. Cleaned it off. And I can feel where the glass has got a fold in it there. I can feel a ridge. So... Because of that, I'm actually going to load this up with quite a lot of glue so that it fills that gap. Okay. And then put that down. And this time it's come clear, so I'm happy with that. And then push those pieces back. If you do find you've snow ploughed the glue in here and filled it up, just use your sharpened tools to go in there. bamboo skewer or a dental pick and then you can just take out that excess glue okay last petal that goes in there and again just trim where the other things are underneath so like that uh, it's a slight curve so i'm hoping the blades the round blades will give me that curve yeah, near enough there okay so there's my last nasturtium and again, don't forget to add little bits of millefiori. Now I've got a bumblebee here, which I'm going to put into the nasturtiums because bees love them. So I'm going to put him about here. Actually, I'll put him there nearest the orange one as is yellow and black. And he is on a piece of masking tape. So I'm going to put some extra glue there and then I'm going to push him in. So take this glue from here that's still wet and put it all in one area like that. Now push your bumblebee in. And really press him down into the glue. Hold him and hold the pieces underneath as you pull back the tape because the glue is wet and it will lift up the pieces so keep your fingers on them and just gently peel it back put your finger on again hold him down now we've got the last wing coming so just gently ease it off and that bit okay now you can just reposition any pieces that got misplaced and he's in i'm just going to fill this area here with a bit of green and then that will be in our nasturtiums in place. Take off the excess glue while it's wet. And you can use this to fill in 
these little areas. So I'm going to put that there. And I'll probably put some more long pieces up here as I will do here. Got a nice long one there. That can go in there. And use your nippers to cut some pieces if you need them. So again, a bit more glue just in there. And you can put a little bit of glue there and use the smaller brush to get into these tight corners. A nice dark piece here. I'm going to put that up right up the side there. But I need to trim to fit in. A little bit here. And don't bother well, hunt. Don't hunt too long for pieces to fit the gap trim pieces and get those in otherwise your glue will dry and then you'll be stuck having to pull it all out again that's quite a nice light one um, where will it go go there nicely these long pieces will blend in with the next flower which is snowdrops Before you start on any more flowers, you need to really clean out this excess glue. If it's wet, it can be used, so just take it off the blade and pop it there. But remove anything that has dried and discard. Just before we move on to the snowdrops, I want to add some buds that we cut earlier. With this large one, I'm going to put a line across it. And that gives the impression that the petals are twisted closed. And use the... And use the nippers because that will give me a curve and those two can go in whole because they're small so a little bit of glue down here for that big one and then whoop, put a smaller one here transparent one there so it's different to the yellow of the bumblebee and the other one can just go here there we go so we've got your buds in 